Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are making high heel shoes by popular demand. Yay! This shoe. Um, let me sound out a caveat first of all. This is not a beginner's class. It's an intermediate class, really. Um, but if you're a pure beginner, I've got you covered. You can either skip to chapter four or just watch it sequentially and you'll still be able to follow along. But I've got you covered in chapter four. First of all, let me talk about a few things that I've done with this pattern. The top line starts about 3.5 cm away from the van point and then runs in a curve through a point 1 cm away from the midpoint of the lateral side vamp line from where it joins a line that comes from the back height passing through that point where the instep or facing line intersects with that right angle line coming from the short heel. To avoid confusion I've marked out the vamp point and the beginning of the top heel as well as the counterpoint and the back height. Now, if we just cut out the pattern that we drew on the tape and place it on this last, you'll notice a few things. You'll notice that it do if you place it at the back height, you have a space. It doesn't lie flush on the last. Now, what we want is for it to lie flush on the last like so, but it doesn't do that until we'll take the back way beneath the back height. So, you see that. Now we need to find a way to correct that so that we can start it at the back height and still have it lie flush on the sides of the last. Now let me demonstrate that by duplicating the pattern that we cut out of the tape. So yeah, I just duplicated it. Um, clean it up a bit. So if we take this duplicated pattern that we cut as is, place it the moment you place it at the back height, you begin to notice problems. You see those spaces there is not lying flush on the last. So how do we correct that? We correct that by doing a thing called springing of this upper. So this is what we want. So we place it flush until this point where it begins to curve, we'll mark up that point. Then just draw a line towards the feather edge from that point. So before we duplicate, we are going to spring. So I'll do both of the two things together. So I place my pattern that I cut out of the tape, place it, you know, line on the center line and draw my curve up to the point where it begins to curve. Now using that point as a pivot, I'll move the rest of the pattern to the back height touches the center line. Then I'll draw in everything else. Now if you do this you will notice that when you cut it and fold it the back heights are touching each other. Now if we place it on the last you will notice that it is lying flush and then touching the back height. Now this is a well sprung pattern. So before you start um, using your pattern, you have to spring it first in order not to have that space problem. So that's the first tip I wanted to share with you. The second tip is, um, it's usually, it's the usual practice in high heel shoemaking, this type, um, not to put your seam at the back. So you put it at the side like this, and that's what I'm doing now. So you just cut it by the side the inside so that the seam is not visible um, from people looking outside. So this is what the pattern will look like ultimately. So you can simply put it on your leather and cut out like so. So two tips that I've already sh shared with you. I've shared with you the tip about springing your uppers and then putting your side seams on your high heel shoes. Now the top tip. The top tip deals with your linings. You're not going to do your linings the same way you did your uppers. Rather than put one side seam, you're going to put two side seams so that you can use the flesh side of your leather on both sides and just the way you would do in another shoe, in any other shoe really. So. I cut out the four parts. Remember that I'm also using the sprung um, master pattern. Um, just duplicate the back like so. Just 
join those two together so this is now my back pattern so i can simply duplicate the front four parts the front part to get the four parts of my lining pattern if i cut that out and this is the four part then i can also use the back part and trace out on the grain side so that i can use the flesh side of my leather for the back part of my lining pattern so that is tip number three it's something i suspect you already know if you make other types of shoes now tip number four tip number four is not a tip really it is the very introduction to making the patterns for high heel shoes so if you're a beginner this part is for you just watch and enjoy so you start your pattern making by taping up your last and measuring the standard last length so you lie your tape along the last till the tip and measure the distance on this last is 27.5 cm then you draw your center lines i do that by you know drawing a line on a tape then eyeballing the middle of the last and then use the line that i previously drew to connect those dots and then get in my center line you would of course do the same at the back so you eyeball the center place your line along those points that you eyeballed and then you have your center lines next thing is to get the widest points of the last you place the last lie the blast on the flat surface and mark the point where those um, extended parts touch a flat surface if you join those two points together you generate a line called the vamp line that vamp line intersects your center line in front at a point called the vamp point now next thing we will calculate the counterpoint the counterpoint is the standard last length divided by 5 on this last that gives us 5.5 cm so you measure this 5.5 cm from the bottom part of your center line at the back upwards towards the top so we measure 5.5 cm towards the top and mark that point in if we add 1 cm to that point that we previously marked we mark another point the point beneath is the counterpoint the point above is our back height now the vamp line at the outside part of the last we will divide it into two so you measure it and divide it into two then you draw a line from your counterpoint to that point to get a line called the quarter line I've actually taught this in several videos but just so that you can have one video dealing on high heel shoes I decided to redo it in this video so that's our quarter line so we had our standard last length as 27.5 if we divide our standard last length again by 4 this time not 5 it will give us the measurement of a point called our instep so we divided it gave us 6.87 which is approximately 6.9 which is approximately 7 cm so we will measure our instep at 7 cm if you want to be finicky and um, uh, politically correct you can mark your 6.85 i'm just using 7 cm so that point there then we also measure that 7 cm around the heel part of the last draw a right angle by just placing our ruler um, perpendicular to a flat surface towards the quarter line the point where it intersects that quarter line if we join our instep to that point we will get the front part of our top line in a lace-up shoe then if we draw a line from our back height towards the middle point of our vamp line on the outside the point where it intersects with that our instep line 
is the point that we can curve in to join the rest part of the top line of this shoe if it was a lace-up shoe. Now you can add your tongue if we are making a lace-up shoe, but that's not what we are making here. We are making a pump. So how did I generate the pattern for the pump? I'll show you right away. I added 3.5 cm from the van point towards the front of the center line, marked it, marked 1 cm away from the middle point of our vamp line and mark that so 3.5 cm away from our vamp point 1 cm away from the middle point of our lateral side vamp line then if i draw a line from the back part of our top line to that point 1 cm away from our vamp line just curving it in like so i can have the complete pattern for my high heel pumps so this pump it isn't finished it's a test shoe actually that i made to demonstrate to you if you guys want more videos on high heel shoes let me know in the comment section in the meantime stay blessed and keep living in the love of jesus christ god bless you